Xylogusquet is situated on the eastern side of Mount Athos, in the middle of a thick oak forest, 700 meters above sea level, between the monasteries of Vatopedi and Pantokrataros Monastery, and is dedicated to the Domitian of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The road to the Sket is surrounded by woods, and only from the last turn, among the dense greenery of trees, one can see the two-story building of the monastery with the monks' cells, crowned with a bright green dome with a cross. The monastery of Our Lady is entered through a gate with blank, almost square-shaped wooden sashes. The monastery yard, paved with stone and surrounded on all sides by buildings. On the north side rises the monastic cell with large windows and a notched gallery on the ground floor, which gives the building a typical southern appearance. In the center of the inner courtyard of the monastery there is an old church, unusually shaped with low domes. Back in the 10th century it was consecrated in honor of the Domitian of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the eastern part of the yard, next to the monastic body, in the shade of centuries-old Cyprus, a temple was built in the name of Saint John of Rila. Unfortunately, exact historical information about the founder and the first inhabitants of the monastery has not been preserved. However, according to monastic legend, the Sket is considered to be the oldest Russian Orthodox monastery in the world whose inhabitants, back in the 10th century, were Russian warriors from the retinue of the enlightened of ancient Russia, saint equal to the apostles, Princess Olga. This place is the source, the cradle of all Russian monasticism. Strictly speaking, more than a thousand years this kid. It is likely that this kid was founded by the attendance of Princess Olga, who came to be baptized in Constantinople. This place, it is mother of God's inheritance, could not fail to impress them. In those ancient times, at this place already existed a little monastery, dedicated to the Domitian of the Blessed Virgin Mary and inhabited by monks from the Greek lands. The place itself here is wooded, cool. Axes, wood is a favorite craft, so the construction started actively. And that is why the skate was called Zylogu because the brethren started to build log houses here, the temple, cells. Xylogu means wood cover. Everyone knows the term xylography, xyla, wood. Apparently, this surprised the local monks with this craft and the skate has had this name for centuries. The first written mention of the old Russian monastery on the Holy Mountain and its Sabbath dates back to 1016. In the library of the Great Lavra Monastery there is a document, signed by the Protos of the Holy Mountain, Nikiforos, and the hegemons of all the Holy Mountain monasteries. Among them, on the 14th place, there is the signature of Hegumen Gerasim, which is accompanied by the inscription Gerasimus is a monk, by the grace of God a priest and abbot of the monastery Ross. In the year 1030, the hegumen of Zylogu was already the monk Theodulus, who signed a mutual act between the monasteries of Esfigmenu and Zylogu. In the same year, the abbot Theodulus bought one of the cells intended for sale at the death of Demetrios Chalkios for 22 coins. At the same time, he received a gift from the abbot of the Domentius Monastery, Gregory, of a desolate place by the sea 
and built there a house with a barn for his boats. Hegemon Theodolus was succeeded by his nephew Ioannistius. Under him, this house was ruined by the monks of Dumentius Monastery, and Hegemon Ioannistius complained against them to the Byzantine Emperor Constantine IX Monomachus as the supreme ruler of all others. By his decree, Hegemon Gregory ceded to Ioannistius a new site eight fathoms wide and long opposite the Pia of the Philadelphia Monastery and Ionysius gave six coins for this. Internal monastic life in the Zylogu monastery at this time proceeded in the performance of monastic rule and the keeping of a modest economy, which was the main means of subsistence for the monks. The old Russian Athos monastery reached its great prosperity during the reign of the son of Holy Vladimir, the Grand Prince of Kiev, Yaroslav the Wise. Thus, in the act from 1048, which is stored in the archive of Old Russian Monastery, the Byzantine Emperor Constantine the Ninth Monomachus refers to Russian Monastery of Virgin Zylogu as Royal Laura, and resolves indisputable questions to address to the Emperor, passing Protaton of the Holy Mountain. Already at that time, the monastery had a well-developed economy. It had its own wharf, ships, arable land and a mill, and the road was built from the wharf to the monastery. Here in Zylogu, the Venerable Anthony of the Caves, the founder of old Russian monasticism, performed his monastic feat. The history of the Sket is closely connected with the life of the famous Saint Anthony of Kiev. It was here that he received the old man's blessing, took monastic Tanja and planted Athos monasticism on the Russian land of grace. According to Byzantine tradition, a monk getting monastic Tanja if he thereafter grows spiritually and founds a monastery, he names it in honor of the Mother Monastery, where he took monastic vows. It is such a clear confirmation of the fact that life of Saint Anthony of Pichorsk is connected with our Russian monastery. Later on, with the blessing of the elders of the monastery, Saint Anthony of Kiev transferred the Athenite monastic Tipikon to Russia, founding upon the Athenite model the Kiev Pechorsk Holy Domitian Monastery, which became the center and school of early Russian monasticism and education of all Russia. From the law records, it is known that the Venerable Anthony, as layman Antipas, arrived to Nathos from Lubich yet at quite a young age. Having spent at the Holy Mountain about 13 years, in the year 1013 he returned to Kiev for the first time, and in the year 1015, in the cause of an Antonisine disorder, after the death of Holy Prince Vladimir and the murder of Saints Boris and Gleb, he again returned to the Holy Mountain, where he asceticized in the secluded cave near the Esfigmenu Monastery, until his final return to Kiev. According to the monastery legend, it was in this cave dug on the cliff above the monastery pier, secluded in prayer the Venerable Anthony of Kiev. In memory of these events, over the cave where he asceticized in the year 1849, the Brotherhood of the Sigmenu Monastery built a small church in his honor, with nearby cells for a life of silence. Hallelujah. 
From the beginning of the 11th century, the monks of Zylogu were sent to Eastern Europe, spreading to these lands the Athonian spiritual traditions. Thus, after the year 1018, a Russian monk from Athos was sent to Poland, where he dungeoned the venerable Moses Ogren as a monk. And, in 1225, on the Pachayev mountain, the Russian saint monk Methodius founded a monastery, known today as the Holy Domitian Pachayev Lavra. The place where it is located is still called the Holy Mountain. The monastery of Zylogu has been a place of ascetic as well as scholarly labors since ancient times. According to the inventory of 1142, there were 49 Russian books for 25 men of the Brethren. From the beginning of the 12th century, the monastery was replenished with new inhabitants from Russia, and they, unable to fit into their original monastery, began to acquire the desolate cells in the neighborhood. And in 1169, when the hegemon of Zylogu was Monk Laurentius, the sacred Koinotita, sacred community, the governing body of Athos composed of representatives from each of the Athenite monasteries, transferred to the Russian monks' monastery nearby. The ancient Thessalonians' monastery, in the name of Saint Hila Pantelimon, now known as Old Russian Monastery, and simultaneously the cells in the capital of the Holy Mount, Karies, which belonged to this monastery. Wherefore, by the common consent of all the monks and all the elders, we hereby grant transfer and give the said Thessalonians monastery to the most honest monk Elder Laurentius and his monks, with the cells belonging to it in the Karies, and with all its property and belongings, and with all its rights and privileges, in order that they hold and administer it throughout all subsequent successive times in a rightful and sovereign way, and make it a true monastery, and do with it as the laws and the divine and sacred regulations command men to do with their administration. Be thou therefore, Monk Master Laurentius, spiritual brother, to thee now my word is addressed. From this day forth the Lord and Master of the Thessalonians Monastery, and do with it what thou wilt, being neither disturbed nor troubled, nor in the least disturbed. Neither we ourselves, nor any future protos, stewards, Hegemons or others, under any plausible pretext whatsoever, can take away the monastery itself from thee, or from the one who follows you, nor demand anything of the monastery from its chattels and real estate, nor can they apportion anything from the fields belonging to the monastery in parts or in whole, either for their own appropriation, the separable, or for the transfer of that to another person. Signed by the hand of the humble monk John, Protos of the Holy Mountain, and twelve more abbots of Athos monasteries, on the 2nd of August 1169. By the same act of the Holy Mount's Protos, the monastery of Zylogu was preserved for the Russian monks, but it lost its independence and was subordinated to the new Russian monastery as a tributary monastery. In those years, Russian monks were interested in the monastic typikon and the practice of noetic prayer, adopted on Athos. Thus, at the end of the 14th century, the Holy Mountain was visited by the Achimandrite of the Pechorsky Monastery of Nizhny Novgorod, Dositios, who wrote, The Holy Mount's monks every day recite half of the Psalter and 600 Jesus prayers, while in Russia whole, the Psalter was recited by monks only during Lent. In the 15th century, in the sketch Zylogu, studying the book collection of the monastery, the monk Nil Sorsky, founding father of the Russian hermitage life, acquired into himself the greatest spiritual wealth. He wrote, Living alone, I examine spiritual writings. Above all, I examine the commandments of the Lord and their interpretation. Of all this I meditate, and what I find that is godly and useful for my soul, I rewrite for myself. The subsequent history of the Sketch Zylogu, up to the beginning of the 19th century, 
is practically untraceable. However, a note submitted in 1561 by the Athenite elders to the Russian government during their stay in Russia to collect donations mentions the affiliation of the monastery with the name Bogorodica to the Russian monastery of the Holy Great Mata Pantelimon and indicates its present location. At the beginning of the 19th century, the monastery of Zailugu became a Cenobitic Sket, and from 1837 the Sket was inhabited by Bulgarian monks in agreement with the dominant Russian monastery. In 1920, the Brotherhood of the Monastery built a church dedicated to Saint John of Rila, and in 1895 a two-story building of cells within another church dedicated to Saints Cyril and Methodius. By the beginning of the 20th century, up to 30 monks, mostly Bulgarians, lived in the Sket. The Balkan Wars, World War I and the Russian Revolution aggravated the already poor situation of the monastery. The inflow of new monks practically ceased and a small brotherhood began to sharply decrease. And the events of the Second World War led the monastery to a severe economic crisis and the Sket was finally depopulated. According to witnesses, in 1972, in the deserted Sket lived two elderly Bulgarian monks and soon was left alone monk father Eutimius. He lived in the Sket until his death in the mid-80s and was buried near the cathedral of the Domitian of the Blessed Virgin Mary. After the death of father Eutimius, there was only one monk in the Sket, the schema monk Jacob, who received his obedience from the abbot of St. Pantelimon's monastery, Achimandrite Jeremiah. On several occasions young novices were sent to help him but they could not endure the miserable life in the remote Sket and went back to the monastery where they did not have to overcome the most urgent problems daily. In 1999 there was a terrible fire in the monastery. In the absence of a telephone, Father Jacob was forced to go on foot for help to Caries. During this time, the Brotherhood building and the library burned down while the fiery elements did not affect any of the monastery's churches. In 2001, the elderly scared commander moved to the Pantelimon monastery, and several young monks and novices, led by Iron Monk Nikolas Generalov, settled in Zylogu. At the same time, with the help of restorers from St. Petersburg, the first work on the restoration of the oldest Russian monastery began in many years. It is God's blessing to be the inhabitant of the monastery of the Mother of God, Zylogu Onathos, recalls Iramonk Nicholas at the time the inhabitant of the monastery. Here the very air is saturated with Jesus' prayer, and we have very few brethren. We are all simple messengers of the monastery. The sket hasn't been given to us yet, and it is probably not planned to be. We are here, as they say, in the heavenly praise. The pilgrims do not forget us, so by the grace of God we try to serve every day. We call ourselves so among ourselves. I am keeper number one. Father Agathodor is keeper number two. He is the youngest doctor of theology. Inokoristes is keeper number three. The monk Martinian, who spent a lot of energy in rebuilding the monastery, was also a member of the Sket at that time. He was an example of patience and humility for the other monks, while possessing no shortage of strength and was rightly considered the strongest monk on the Holy Mount. A new stage in the life of the Sket Zylogu begins with the visit of Patriarch Cyril of Moscow and All Russia in June 2013. At that time, the monastery was in a deplorable condition and was gradually deteriorating. You know, I was here, how many years ago? About ten years ago. Everything was fine here, everything was in its place. When did it collapse? Well, we had to see it all to understand that the brethren need strength here, to direct to what we now primarily need. Of course, now the restoration of Pantelimon Monastery in Sket, Old Russian Monastery is in progress, 
But here too, we need to invest effort. By the end of the visit of Patriarch Cyril, it was decided to allocate funds for the restoration of the monastery. And in the Sket of Zylogu, after years of neglect, began major restoration work. In three years, we will celebrate the thousandth anniversary of the Russian presence on Holy Mount Athos. It all began from here, and then already old Russian monastery, and then quite recently new Russian monastery, St. Pantelimon monastery. And that is why this place has a special meaning. Now a lot of work is being done on the restoration of the Holy Pantelimon monastery and old Russian monastery. But the task is also in the very near future to completely restore Zylogu as our first monastery so that we could meet here the millennium of Russian monasticism on Athos, in a magnificent place, and that the restoration of the monastery will be evidence of our gratitude to all the monks who, for a thousand years, kept the fire of Russian monasticism lamp unquenchable here. I know how our Russian pilgrims love this place, and I believe that as the restoration work progresses, more and more people will come here and receive spiritual comfort. Today, the entire complex of buildings of the monastery is restored, the churches are restored, the landscaping of the courtyard and the surrounding area with the garden and orchard is completed. The road leading to the sket has been repaired. The main temple of the monastery dedicated to the Domitian of the Blessed Virgin Mary has been restored. It is one of the oldest churches on the Holy Mountain and dates back to the 10th century. Here is kept the most important shrine of the Sket, the miraculous icon of the Mother of God, Glicophilusa, Virgin of the Sweet Keys. And with its finding is associated the following legend. Fortunately, at one time, I came across the last of the oldest Bulgarians in this monastery, the monk Father Eotimius. He told me that the miraculous icon of the Mother of God was miraculously found on a cypress tree that grew in the monastery's yard. That cypress is no longer there. It was recently cut down because it was huge and very tall. I even have a picture somewhere. In the church of the Domitian of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the monks of the monastery keep carefully the relics of many saints. There are relics in the temple. We have relics of Martyrs Eutimius, Ignatius, Acacius, Gregory the Theologian, St. John Chrysostom, and the Venerable Eutimius of Vatopedi. Pilgrims visiting the Holy Mountain worship the Holy Relics. They get acquainted with the Greek saints, Byzantine saints, Athos saints. And it's in order for the Greek population to know more about the Russian saints. Here we have icons and relics. Greeks especially venerate Archbishop Luke of Voina Yasinetsky. The doctor, that's what they call him. They also know Serafim of Sarov, the venerable Sergius of Radunev. Icon with the relics of Saint Ignatius Branchaninov. Writer's warrior Fyodor Fyodorovich Ushakov, which should be very familiar to Greeks, but unfortunately not everyone knows that he freed Greece from the Turkish yoke. His fleet on Kerkira defeated the Turkish fleet. And the icon with the relics of the Reverend Saint Siluan of Athos, the head of our Saint Pantelimon's monastery. Another church is located on the second floor of the monastic building 
above the refectory and is dedicated to the holy equal to the apostles, brothers Cyril and Methodius. Also, the church in the name of Saint John of Rila, built by Bulgarian monks in 1820, was restored. There is the church in honor of John of Rila, which the Bulgarians built in honor of their special saint. Many people know that John of Kronstadt had his patron saint was John of Rila. The church was renewed, restored. It is in such a splendid condition, already ready for the celebration. Of course, much remains to be done to revive the spiritual life of the Skedzailogu. But today, by God's will and with the support of many people, there is a revival of this ancient Russian monastery, which, since those distant times, was the spiritual center of orthodoxy, which connected and closely linked Kievan Rus with the holy Mount Athos. From here, 1000 years ago, Saint Anthony of Kiev was first transferred and established in Russia Orthodox monasticism. And since then, Athos and its spiritual traditions throughout the centuries played an exceptionally important role in the development of spirituality and culture of the East Slavic Orthodox peoples, affecting their identity and uniqueness. And it is very important that in this quality the Holy Mount Athos also acts today. <laughs>